Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl and the Arrowverse as a whole. Again, we're doing a mixed video. But before we get into this video, I want to announce an announcement in this video. So I talked about it on my stream, so a few of you guys probably know about this. But I am going to San Diego Comic Con this very year. And as you know, I live in London and the event is in San Diego. So what I'm doing and what I've done is I've set up a GoFundMe page. And if any of you guys can contribute to me trying to get to San Diego Comic Con this year, I'm going to be doing a giveaway for every single person, no matter if it's a dollar, a pound, five pounds, ten pounds, whatever it is you're all going to be entered into the giveaway because when I go to San Diego Comic Con, I'm gonna buy a bunch of exclusive pop figures, no matter the price, the coolest DC ones, maybe some Marvel ones, and you're all going to be entered and I'm gonna send it out to a bunch of you guys. So that is my massive thank you if you do contribute. If not, don't worry about it, but you can go check out the GoFundMe page or my Patreon page, which I've reopened, and I'm going to be doing some exclusive stuff on Patreon, maybe some reactions, as I promised in the past. Also, if you join in my live stream, some of you guys have been donating via the Super Chat option. That means a whole lot. All your names are being written down, and you're all into the giveaway. There's about 15 of you guys so far, so massive thank you to everyone who has contributed, and a shout out to some who were in my live stream earlier today, who've already added to the GoFundMe page. So. Massive thank you, if you could share this around that would mean the most to me. And so let's get into today's video. So what we're going to be talking about in today's video, we're going to be talking about a Screen Rant article where they talk about who could potentially die in crisis. I'm going to give my thoughts on some of that because I think it's interesting. And also we're going to be talking about when Supergirl goes back for filming, when to expect obviously the trailer, but I'll make a proper San Diego Comic Con video as we get a bit closer to the event and why. I think and why a lot of people think they're going back to shoot Supergirl early. So if you do go on to enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, turn on notifications and subscribe so you don't miss any Supergirl or Arrowverse videos in the summer. Okay, so let's first off talk about the Supergirl date. So I briefly mentioned this, I think like once in one of my videos, I didn't make it like the main topic. So essentially it was announced by one of the guys who was working on The Flash, his name's David, you can check him out on Twitter, I'll leave his link in the description. And he announced, well he mentioned that Supergirl is going to be going back and filming very early and Supergirl is actually going to be going back to film officially in one day and one month from now so right at the very end of June so the 27th of June is when they're set to return obviously the writers are back already you know maybe in the next week or so they will be writing up obviously they have the rough idea because they teased what was happening at the end of the season so they I'm guessing have a rough outline right now but they are going back to shoot early normally they shoot about a week or so later so the flash is returning in early July so it's exciting for us because that means we get more content to cover because they might release the title and we'll get some behind the scenes photos from Canada Graphs, YVR Shoots, Demoskira Bound, all of those who are on set in Vancouver. So that's very exciting for us making videos because we'll get more content. But also, it's coming early. So we're going to get a bigger Comic Con trailer because last year we didn't really get a proper Supergirl trailer. We only got a few new shots which was involved in some of the old shots from season 3 and this was due to Melissa actually being on Broadway at the time so that didn't matter because I'm totally all for her being on Broadway because I went there I went to New York to watch her so all for that didn't mind that but this year we're going to have a proper big trailer because they got a few weeks extra and I think the reason a lot of you guys online have been theorizing about this is you remember Melissa actually obviously has a lot of control she's not you know the top top person but she has a say in what happens I guess because she was able to postpone her episodes by doing Broadway so they obviously didn't have such a big problem so I'm sure they can bend to whatever needs to happen and so they're going to be having a longer Christmas break that's what David said on Twitter and I think the reason for this and lots of you guys have been theorizing about this is because Melissa got engaged back in February, and this is to Chris Wood, who plays Mono on the show. And if they're having a long Christmas break, you would hazard the guess that maybe it's something to do with that, because most couples who get engaged wait about a year, and Christmas time is like a few months before February. So the theories online is 
they're getting married then so that's why they need a longer break that makes a lot of sense in my eyes and that would probably be why they would be willing to come back early they get a longer christmas break they can do the wedding that's not confirmed obviously but yeah i think that's very interesting but they're definitely coming back one day one month from now to shoot supergirl we'll be back obviously you know making videos if there are set photos or anything like that okay so let's move on to this screen rant article so they talk about the people the characters who might die in crisis so we're gonna go through this give my opinions on it obviously the link will be in the description below and so number one they have they put deathstroke and let's read this because this is a bit strange deathstroke may be getting his own animated show so that's on the cw by the way if you guys didn't know that but that's not to say that he's completely off the cutting room floor. After a long absence from the Arrowverse, Deathstroke has got his own redemption in seasons 5 and 6 while still keeping the spirit of the character intact. He's been in the Arrowverse since Lian Yu, just like Oliver Queen. With that show ending, it might be high time that this character end as well, tying up those loose ends so we're not wondering where he'll go after that. The animated series will still have plenty of material to use as we only get a glimpse of Deathstroke's life. So, I don't know, this seems kind of way out of the blue in my opinion. I would not expect Deathstroke to appear at all. He's just super grounded and Crisis is going to be not grounded at all. So, yeah, we're dealing with the Anti-Monitor. I don't agree with that. I don't think Deathstroke's even going to appear. So, number two is the Atom. And so, they talk about that the Atom's one of the oldest members of Legends of Tomorrow. And, you know, he entered in Arrow and Arrow's ending. So... He hasn't had much of an arc on the show, as they say on Screen Rant, and so most of the development apparently is already finished, so he doesn't have that much to offer as a whole, they say, and they say it will shake up the Legends dynamic going forward, so I don't agree with this. I think someone will die from Legends, someone will die from, like, every show. I don't think it's going to be Ray, but it could be because it's not as far-fetched as, say, bringing Deathstroke in, because he's going to be in the crossover, isn't he? Because the Atom is... But they've been teasing a future version of the Atom on The Flash for ages. Ryan Choi, who is a future version of the Atom in the comics. And apparently he made Barry's future suit. He's there in the future. Everyone knows about him. So maybe that's leading to that. I don't know. But mm, not so sure about that. Number three is Superman. I really agree with this. I think what they're going to do, instead of Supergirl and The Flash time, they're going to switch it around. And it's going to be Supergirl holding Superman in her arms. I think that makes so much sense, changing it for the TV show, and instead of her dying, going for the comic book moment, we get that comic book moment that was obviously shown in season 2, there was that shot of Kara knocked out by Metallo's kryptonite, and Superman was holding it, that was obviously a massive sort of homage to Crisis on Infinite Earths, and I think something like that could happen with Supergirl holding Superman, and he's dead. So talking about all this Crisis stuff, I really recommend you do read the comics. Number four, they say, is Diggle. So, John Diggle is the loyal friend of Oliver Queen and has been since the very beginning. And John was willing to join Oliver's crusade to protect Star City, becoming a valuable asset to the team. John has managed to start his own family, taking over Oliver's position and more. While we don't think that Diggle will lose his life if Oliver did, it wouldn't be totally out of the realm of possibility. It could also give some time to Green Lantern and Jordan Diggle to take the spotlight. I really don't agree. I don't think John's going to die at all. I think he's going to be fine. So I wouldn't worry about that. Number five, Citizen Steel, they say. Uh, Nate is one of the newer members of Legends of Tomorrow, but he's gone through a bit of a rough patch with his tenure with the team. So he hasn't really been around that much this season with the team. So I guess this could happen. I think this is a possibility. I think someone from like each show is going to die. I think from Supergirl, it will be Superman if anyone dies. I think maybe Nate could die from Legends. I don't think it's going to be Sarah or anyone. So, yeah. Could be possible. Number six, they put White Canary. So, Sarah Lance. She's died a few times, but it might be high time for the captain's chair to be handed off to someone else. I don't think this is happening. Like, they're not going to kill Sarah off. That would be major. Like, major, major. Um, number seven, they put Constantine. Uh, Constantine was given a second chance by the Arrowverse after the show was cancelled. He joined Arrow, then Legends, as the main cast member. So, John could finally make his way to hell, but in exchange to save the multiverse. Could happen, but I think they're going to want to keep Constantine because he's a fan favourite. Don't think he's going to die in this crossover, personally. So, number eight is Supergirl. 
So they talk about how Supergirl basically dies in the comics and how it could follow through on the show, but that's not going to happen because Supergirl is not going anywhere. She has been renewed for another season. They're not just going to kill the main character off. That is not happening. And Nine, the Flash, again, he dies in Crisis on Infinite Earths in the comics. Not going to happen. I think they may switch and do Jay Garrick instead, or maybe like a version of the Flash from another Earth. And you see that very comic book look where he disintegrates. Obviously, we got a sort of homage to that in the Elseworlds crossover when Supergirl and the Flash are sort of starting to disintegrate. Um, but, you know, Barry's not going to die. Number 10, Green Arrow. This should be way higher up on the list because of the finale ending with the 2019 Oliver Queen tombstone. So, Oliver's probably the most likely to die because of his deal. And... I feel like they may find a way to cop out of it, but I think for now, in this timeline, Oliver's probably going to die in crisis. So, what do you think about all this? Let me know in the comments down below. Are you super excited that Supergo is coming back to film early? Also, what do you think? Who's going to die in the Arrowverse crisis event? I think Oliver's probably the most likely. I don't agree on Deathstroke, Supergo, or The Flash, and some other ones in this article, but, you know, it's kind of interesting to read through. Also, please be sure to check out the GoFundMe page, Patreon, and also if you're on any of the live streams, the Super Chat button. It really means so much if you contribute to me trying to get to San Diego Comic Con. It means so much to me, so thank you guys so much for your support. We're nearly at 100,000 subscribers. I can't wait. I've got loads of videos planned, and hopefully we reach it by the time of Comic Con. Fingers crossed, we've got about 5,000 left, so if you could share the videos around, tell your friends in real life, tell your friends online, also leave a like because apparently it gets into other people's recommended box so more people see it and we can get to 100k quicker so that would mean so much so I'll see you guys later, goodbye.